Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and welcome back to another Kutzka's Art Reaction, and yeah, the last thing to ever happen in the universe. I have a feeling that this one is going to be talking about the heat death of the universe. I've heard from a couple of sources about, like, what happens at the end of the universe. I mean, theoretically, we're still a long way from that, thankfully. From what I remember, the two things that I remember sticking out in my mind uh, were, one, you'd have, like, neutron stars would eventually, like, fuse into just giant balls of iron. Basically, I I think from, like, it, I'm forgetting the, the process exactly. But then the other thing, like, the very last thing would be that... Uh, like, uh, the black holes would disintegrate just from uh, the expression of, like, Hawking radiation. Other than that, all I know is that, theoretically, from what we know of physics at the moment, the expansion of the universe might become so fast, because it is accelerating, I think, where it might get to the point where it even starts ripping, like, atoms apart, and then it's just, the universe is just, like, truly dead after that. So... Yeah, uh, again, not a nice thought, but we're also very far away from that, thankfully. So let's see what Kutzkazart has to see. So let's see what Kutzkazart has to say on the topic then, shall we? The universe today is happy and healthy, with exciting things okay. going on. But at some point, the nights will turn dark. Everything that once was will peacefully sleep forever. But and that's what really is sad. the last thing that will ever happen, and... When will it Last be? Star Safari. It turns out there is such a thing, and you probably haven't heard about it. Let's travel to the okay. end of the universe and look at the last thing. The After last Messy thing. Earth, our universe was a sleepy baby, warm and dark, filled with swirling clouds of hot hydrogen and helium. The story of creation is a story of this gas and where it Never thought to describe the birth of the universe as a sleepy baby. We'll end up. Shortly after, the universe got busy making Shortly. the first generation of stars. They were massive and lived violent lives, forging new elements, only to release most of them when they blew up. Countless stars were born and refined the gas available in the universe, cycling matter around, each generation giving most of its gas and fresh elements to the next. But not all gases returned. No. Nope. Every time a new generation of stars forms, they also make more and more red dwarfs that burn slowly and live for trillions of years. When they die, they don't give their gas back to the universe, but turn into white dwarfs. So red dwarfs lock up more gas forever. Some more gas is locked forever in other remains of dead stars. Neutron stars Neutron and black, black holes, holes. Which is bad, as it reduces the material available for new stars. Today, the universe is a great home for us and will remain so for billions of years. But most of the gas has been used up or trapped. Over 90% of the stars that will ever be born have been born already. Okay, again, billions of years, but still, that is, that's very depressing and kind of scary. Jeez, okay. Granted, like, I'm saying that, and yet this is the same sort of deal as, like, when you first hear that, like, the universe is going to end at some point billions of years in the future in fifth grade, and then you're just a nihilist for the rest of the day. It's like, oh, why does it matter? The universe is going to end at some point. When, I mean, really, it's like, yeah, but, dude, like, you you won't even be remembered when that happens. To get to the last Which, again, is also happen, kind of depressing. All other things need to happen first. The next few hundred billion years will be fun and a great time for galactic exploration. Yep. But, step by step, large stars and stars like our sun will die out. Eventually, almost all the stars will be red dwarfs slowly dying. The end uh. of everything, but not quite. All stars will be red dwarfs slowly dying. That. If that's not actual, like, real cosmic horror right there, I, I don't know what is. In a few trillion years, the cosmic gas will finally have run out. About 88% of the mass of every galaxy will be white dwarfs, 2% neutron stars and black holes, and about 10% gas giants and sad brown dwarf losers. <laughs> white dwarfs are the corpses of old stars, not much bigger than Earth, but on average as massive as half our sun, some even much more. This makes them the third densest objects in the universe, yeah. after neutron stars and black holes about a million times denser than the sun today. 
Since they used to be active stars, their surface can be as hot as 150,000 degrees. White dwarfs are dim, hot, dense spheres that don't do anything anymore. But eventually, even white dwarfs will die because they're slowly losing their heat. It takes at least 10 trillion years, more than 700 times longer than the current age of the universe. Oh, well, As they okay. do their cooling down, the universe around them will irreversibly grow dark. Oh, that's something I just, that's something else I remember hearing about the, uh, about the heat death of the universe. Um, the actual, like, portion of the universe, of the, like, universe dying will be, like, hundreds and hundreds of times, well, not even hundreds, probably like, thousands and thousands of times longer than the time when the universe is alive, just because of the slow, inevitable death like this, of just, like, everything just slowly failing and stopping. As more and more white dwarfs burn out and turn into dead husks, black dwarfs. Spheres of death as cold as space itself, invisible against the dark backdrop. Over trillions Black and trillions dwarves. of years, every object in every galaxy is eventually either ejected into the void or its orbit decays and it will fall into the central black hole and be destroyed. In about a quintillion Jeez. years, all galaxies have evaporated and every object is on its own, in the center of its own observable universe, emptiness as far as can be seen in any direction, traveling through black nothingness. Still, there are things that will happen. Black holes are dying, slowly. Yep, as they I said. They away by emitting Hawking radiation until they're so small that they die in a final flash of light. This will take about a Google years, 10 to a the power Google of 100 years. years, until the last supermassive black hole dies. A number so absurd, there's nothing to compare it to. Maybe some living beings could have survived around black holes, but even this science fiction option ends now. After this unsettling amount of time, we're not even close to the end. Now is the time of the Black Dwarfs. It turns out there's some weird physics going on inside the dead husk of stars. What? It, uh, what? Really? I thought uh, oh, I thought all the Black Dwarfs were gone. What? What? The weird physics of Black Dwarfs. A Black Dwarf is a sphere the size of Earth, as massive as a star, but almost as cold as absolute zero. Stars stay alive because of their intense heat in their cores. So why do black dwarfs not collapse into a black hole? What keeps them together? They're frozen solid! Oh god, don't tell me, is that the actual answer? Deep inside a black dwarf, matter is squeezed to densities millions of times greater than anything we see on Earth. The pressure is so great that electrons can't combine with the nuclei to form atoms. Instead, matter is weird, degenerate. The nuclei are compressed by the weight of the star, locked into a rigid lattice, while the electrons form a plasma between them. And these electrons hold the star together. We're simplifying, but imagine matter as a subway train and electrons as passengers. If there are empty seats, passengers spread out because they care a lot about their personal space. Okay. But as a black dwarf is so incredibly dense, this is like squishing more and more passengers into our train. Gravity is pushing in, trying to collapse it, the passengers are forced to sit and stand close together, which they hate. And so the passengers, our electrons, try to push out against gravity as hard as they can. This way, the electrons that are having a horrible time in the crowded train that's the Black Dwarf... Keep it from crushing us! Everything ah! else in the universe may have crumbled already, but these tiny particles push against each other until the end of time. Or they would, if quantum mechanics didn't ruin everything. Of course, quantum mechanics ruins stuff. Well could you call, actually wait could you call it ruining if they're holding back like the complete heat death of the universe simplifying a lot when particles get Sim close enough sometimes simplifying a lot quote unquote they, it, like i'm going to imagine like 50 like quotation marks on either side of this they can jump at each other and fuse together a process called quantum tunneling oh okay this happens constantly in stars because of their intense heat it's one of the key reasons stars can fuse elements into new ones but it also happens at a temperature near absolute zero, just, well, mind-numbingly slowly. <laughs> this is the final step to creating the most interesting slowly. thing to ever happen in our universe. What's happening here, here? In this lone black dwarf, something fantastic occurs. Nothing happens for a trillion years. Nothing of course. at all. Can you imagine that? But then, a single fusion reaction. Two carbon nuclei combined by quantum tunneling to become magnesium. 
another 100 trillion years pass. It happens again, then nothing for another bazillion years. So I'm now I'm wondering when they say bazillion, do they are they talking just like metaphorically as a joke or are they being literal? Actually, wait, is a bazillion even a thing? So basically, from the stuff that I've looked at, um, the general consensus is the general consensus is a bazillion has a billion zeros after the one. Oh, okay. Oh, two oxygen nuclei combine into silicon. As eons pass, the nuclei in the frozen black dwarf slowly combine, making new heavier nuclei. Yeah, of course. And these take even longer to fuse because they're heavier. Time, they eventually no refunds. Yeah. Remember the breathtaking amount of time it took for a supermassive black hole to evaporate. That's a brief moment in comparison to what's going on here. The difference between a second and trillions of years has lost all meaning. Over a time so absurd that it has no name, nuclei keep fusing into heavier elements. Until, when silicon nuclei fuse, they form nickel-56. Nickel-56 is radioactive, which means it's unstable. And when it eventually decays and turns into iron, it emits two positrons, antimatter electrons. Antimatter? And these two positrons find two electrons and annihilate them and themselves which is a problem remember how the uncomfortable electrons produce the pressure to hold the star together destroying the electron means fewer friends to help them hold up the star oh losing an electron does not give them more space to scratch their butts it just makes gravity squeeze harder the walls closing in on those that remain in the case of the most massive black dwarfs this is catastrophic bit by bit the black dwarf turns into a sphere of iron and more electrons are annihilated. For at least 10 to the power of 1,000 years, almost, but not quite forever, there's no <laughs> visible change in the entire universe. I, I like that. Almost, but not quite forever. Like, forever is a quantifiable, like, a time span in that case. I mean, okay. And then, finally, the last thing to ever happen happens. The black dwarf has lost one too many electrons. It can no longer support its immense uh -oh, mass here we and go. goes into an uncontrolled collapse, a supernova. It first implodes and then explodes as bright as a galaxy and fills the empty universe with light again. A beautiful moment nobody will get to enjoy. And then as quickly as it began, it's all over. Darkness again. Because then Emptiness. there's nothing. That was the last thing that will ever happen. The universe may now be truly dead. But don't be bummed out about it. This is so far away in the future that forever hardly describes it. <laughs> Today, the universe is the best place it could be for us. And you can sleep tight tonight, knowing the last interesting thing that will ever happen is forever long away. Okay, so I... Right. This is, I mean, it just goes to show how nuts this is, that if you use the word forever, it is not a long enough span of time. That is... I, swear, I had never heard... I have... Before this, I had never heard of a black dwarf. I thought that, uh, that it went from, like, white dwarf, and then it cooled into basically iron as all of its stuff, like, fused and decayed and stuff. But... The fact that the black dwarf, that, that these black dwarves would last so long, again, that the word forever isn't long enough to talk about their lifespan, that is absolutely insane. Again, I don't even think human, humanity will exist, like, as a concept, if, if life exists at this point. I, but I mean, just... Oh, jeez, that is that is weird, fascinating, a little depressing, but again, it's kind of negated by how far off it is. It's just, woo -hoo. So yeah, that'll be it for now. So, of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Corner video will lead to my Let's Play of the Day, and with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.